So today I'm giving you guys an overview of what we've been using for history this year. Um, we've been using the Story of Civilization. I don't have all the components for it, so I can't give a really thorough review on it, but I can tell you how we're using it. So last year, in the beginning of the school year, we were using The Good and the Beautiful for history. And this is the book of the history stories, which I've still been using because we love this part of it. Um, we used it last year when we were going in an RV across the country. And this year we were no longer in our RV and it just wasn't working well for us anymore. So I kind of ditched it after the first unit. We did the Civil War unit and then I got rid of it. So the components I do have is this teacher's manual. Um, I did purchase the book on Audible from Amazon. And that's the main textbook. And then I also purchased the online streaming videos. So I can show you all three of those. So there is a separate workbook that you can get for your kids. And it has... I didn't get it because it looked like it was too childish for my children. Basically, it has a lot of crossword puzzles and other activities I know my kids would not like. So I picked this out. I was excited about all the different craft activities. The issue is a lot of the craft activities are just too childish for my boys. Um, they're in fifth and seventh grade. This is the one craft activity that we did do. It's build a bomb shelter out of a Quaker Oats canister. So I'm going to show you guys a little clip of how ours turned out. Here is our finished bomb shelters that we made. Uh, they're made out of cardboard, oatmeal canisters, and paint, and a little bit of tape and glue. I made it raised up so it looks like it's underground. And the kids stocked it with their Playmobil accessories. Uh, first, I'm going to let you guys listen to a sample of the audiobook, which is the main textbook for it. I didn't buy the physical book for it, I just got the audio and I used my Amazon Echo Dot to listen to it. And while you listen to it, I'm going to show you the teacher's manual. Um, this has activities in it, craft projects. The main reason I got it was for this questions for review part. So after we listen to the audio version of the book, um, I go over the narration exercise with the kids and then I ask them these questions, just out loud. Getting your selection from Audible, Resuming the Story of Civilization, Volume 4, The History of the United States. There's the Challenger Tragedy. Not that the 1980s were without trouble. One of the most memorable events of the decade was the Challenger Tragedy of 1986. The Challenger was a space shuttle set to launch into space on January 28th, 1986. The entire nation watched the launch on television, including in school classrooms. Let's stop into one of these classrooms and see how the events of that day unfolded. Shh! Quiet, children! admonished Mrs. Henderson for the third time. So in our last lesson, we were talking about just a lot of the challenges that the United States was going through in the 70s and how Americans really were unhappy with the direction of the country. In the presidential election of 1980, Americans chose to get rid of Jimmy Carter, and they elected instead the Republican candidate Ronald Reagan. Reagan had been the governor of California, but many Americans knew him as a famous actor from the 40s and 50s in the computer and start using it. And because of this, computer ownership soared in the late 1980s. And so this next part is the part that my kids love a lot. It's different questions and answers, and they like to just sit there together and yell out the answers.
but I'm going to show you guys some of the other activities that we use to round out their history curriculum. Um, I like to do period clothing from different time periods. Um, these came from education.com, and this is the 1920s. And then the rest of the clothing I have came from Teachers Pay Teachers. This is the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 70s, and we've got the 80s, and we're going to do the 90s next. And this I had to pay maybe $5 for and print it up myself. And what the kids do is they cut out, cut out the paper and they just glue it down here. And if I had girls, I'd probably do paper dolls out of it. But I have boys and they don't really like playing with that stuff. Um, some of the other things I've added to it, this is from Knotgrass. It's Maps from America. And I've had this when we tried Knotgrass a few years ago. And I've kept it. And we're, I'm matching it up with different time periods from history. And the thing I like about this, this is the Great War. Um, they have the directions on one page and then right next to it they have the map that the kids can read and fill it out themselves. So another thing that I like to add to it this year is this huge timeline from Homeschool in the Woods. This thing is really massive. We would do this like 10 years at a time the kids would get to cut it out and paste it to the right time period. And this one doesn't go all the way to the 1990s or anything. It stops at 1943. And this is the whole thing laid out. My older son did the blue one and my younger son did the red one. See if I can get kind of a side view of it. And I thought this added a lot to our history lesson. Another thing that I added to make the lessons a little bit more fun was each time period, I would make the kids a special lunch from that time period. Like what kids would eat for school or what kids would eat for lunch during that time. And I started with the Civil War. Here's just all the different recipes that I had. Some of these we would actually make together and some I would just prepare for them. And then we would, when we would listen to our audio for the week, of the main textbook, I would give them the food to eat. So here's a clip of two of the lunches that I made my kids. Um, I have the Vietnam War era. I made that one for them. And that was late 1960s, early 1970s. And then I've got a clip from the 1980s. a few more of the extra things I did. I would do extra reading just to kind of round out everything. This is a story from World War II from the Good and the Beautiful Big Book of History Stories. And I was still using that. And also I just had a few other books at home. Here's just a few of the books I had. This Pearl Harbor. And we did a small unit on the Titanic, so I had a few books that I read to them. I also added this activity book that I found on Amazon, Escape This Book Titanic. The kids go through the whole book with different adventures. It's like you choose history adventure type thing. And they do activities along the way. And they get to do coloring activities and cut and pasting activities. And this is a World War I comic book type thing. So that's basically it for Story of Civilization. My kids loved the audiobook and they absolutely loved the online streaming videos. Next year, they're going to be doing history separate, but I did purchase the audiobook for the ancient history that they have for Story of Civilization. And during those days, my kids are going to be doing history together and I'm going to be making them like ancient history recipes that they get to eat. 
So we overall really liked the story of Civilization. The main things that I liked about it uh, were the scope and sequence of it. It covered so many different periods of history and it did so many different historical events and the presidents. It covered all the presidents. Um, so compared to The Good and the Beautiful, we're definitely going to be using this next year and we're going to pass on The Good and the Beautiful history. I felt like The Good and the Beautiful would spend way too much time on each individual person. Beautiful, for example, spent an entire day on Clara Barton, and this one really goes into more about the events that happened, and it just briefly touches upon different historical people. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Bye!